Tonight we're talking about peace and calmness as it relates to practicing Hong Sa, which really is the, the goal of Hong Sa. I wouldn't even call it a goal. Swamiji, he talked about Hong Sa, energization, Om technique, the Kriya technique, as all four of those main techniques that Master gave for Kriya Bans, as communing with a different aspect of God. So they're not really just, just techniques. They also really are God contact, direct perception of God, and not just techniques. And so it helps to practice these things with that consciousness that we're not just doing a mantra and watch, watching the breath, but that we're feeling divine peace within ourselves. And I'm going to read a few things Swamiji said about peace and calmness because it's very important to be really clear when we try to contact the divine and some aspect of God rather than vague. If you ask someone a vague question, you'll get a vague answer. If you ask someone the right question, you'll get the right answer. And so it really helps to understand these things clearly. So I'll explain a little bit about the difference between peace and calmness from Swamiji. Peace is passive more. It's the absence of turmoil and agitation, whereas calmness is this powerful and dynamic, expansive consciousness. It's almost like when our consciousness is expanded, the little ripples of waves become tiny ripples, whereas when our consciousness is small, then these ripples become big waves and really upset us. So calmness has this expansion. Swamiji described it once as, it is strong sunlight as opposed to cleansing rain. And then I'll just read a couple of things. It's just really important to hear Swamiji's words because he had the, the God contact to be able to explain these things in a very clear experiential way. He said, peace is the basic condition for every positive state of mind, love and joy and blissful awareness of life's beauty and perfection. Without peace, these transcendent states are unimaginable, but with peace, all good things seem possible. And then he talks about the difference between peace and calmness. Peace and calmness differ from one, from one another only in that peace is the soothing cessation of all agitation of feeling, whereas calmness is dynamic and is the silent, essential core of creativity, of impersonal love, and of divine wisdom. And then finally, just Swamiji really emphasized the need for peace in this age right now that we're in. And we all know this. It's just that lives are very hectic. They're agitated. People are agitated. It's just it's a crazy time we live in, let's face it. I, I've been on the planet many decades, and I've never seen anything like this, especially with the consciousness on the planet right now. And this is what Swamiji says about the time we're in and about the need for peace and calmness as really essential, and especially as devotees. Swamiji writes, this is in the Hindu way of awakening, which I would really highly recommend that book for everybody. I think it's one of his best. He writes, we have emerged from Kali Yuga, a male dominated era when physical force seemed the only way of attaining one's objectives. And we are already being swayed by the fresh spring breezes of Dwapara Yuga, the age of energy. There will be increasing awareness of the need for feminine inwardness <clears throat> as a balance to masculine outwardness, for inner inspiration as a balance to outward conquest, for feeling as the very essence of consciousness itself. Feeling is the very essence of consciousness itself, he says. In the struggle to adapt to these changes, it will be increasingly necessary to distinguish between calm feeling, which is intuitive, and the disruptive feelings of raw emotion. There is a need now, today, to recognize the importance of inner peace as the soil in which alone the plant of true happiness can flourish. So he talks about calm feeling as being intuitive. And these, all aspects of God, God is experienced in the heart, not in the head. And even peace and calmness, we think that we're upset 
or anxious because of what's up here. And there's that expression, it's all in the mind, or it's all in the head. It's not. It's all in the heart. It's all in the heart. And so when we're upset, when we're anxious, when we have these thoughts churning in our heads, restless thoughts or anxious thoughts, it's not up there because we we try to deal with it on that level up there and we try to solve the problems and really it just gets more and more agitated. What we need to do is we need to go to the heart, the source, the origin, because when we have agitated feeling in the heart, then the thoughts are be, start becoming agitated. And I've seen this really really helpful practice in the last year or two where I really make a conscious effort and a conscious practice to try to find that point of peace and calmness in my heart. And I've learned that it's always, it's there, it's who we are. Master described this divine awareness in his autobiography of a yogi when he had his experience of samadhi, he, he cognized it as a point of intuitive perception in my heart. And I have found that when I practice a little bit of hongsa, that I can find that point uh, more and more easily, not always easily or deeply, but I, it's there. I just need to look for it in a calm way. I found I, a few years ago, about three and a half years ago, I had a really bad fall and I hit my head and I had a brain injury. The doctor said it was a traumatic brain injury. It was traumatic and dramatic, but it really unsettled my brain. It was like the wires got crossed and there was just constant sort of sparks and crossed wires and just agitation. For the first three months, I really couldn't sleep at all. Just there was just constant anxiety and thoughts and just strange thoughts. And it was just, I reached a point where I realized, oh, I can't even trust my own thoughts. That was a realization. I think most of us probably can't trust our own thoughts. But at that time, especially when a thought came, because we think a thought is ours, it's my thought. And I understood this is just crossed wires happening in my brain. And it was very strange. But the only way out was to go into my heart and get away from my brain and start to have my heart as my center of awareness. And I found that that was the way out of any of that craziness that the brain was going through, was to find that point of stillness in my heart. And you can do this really, really quickly. I was able to do it very quickly. As soon as I just turned attention from that static and stuff in the brain to my heart, there was just a stillness and a calmness and just a comfort, a recognition that, ah, Yes, this is really who I am. It's this stuff and all these thoughts, that's not who I am. This peace and calmness is who I am. So this really is the essence of it. And what I think I would like us to do is to just do a short meditation and we'll practice what I'm just describing. I'm just trying to find that point of peace, that stillness and calmness at the center, that point of intuitive perception in the heart. All divine feeling is based on intuition. And this is, Master said, God contact is based on intuition. He almost defined meditation and God contact as done with intuition, which is the calm feeling of the heart. And so this is really peace and calmness from those two things. All these other divine qualities arise from that. And this is why it's really so important to go to that point of peace and calmness. So let's do a little bit of a practice. Let's sit upright. Shoulders back, chest out. Eyes gazing gently upwards. And consciously relax the body. And also consciously relax the brain and the mind. I feel like almost like the brain cells themselves. We're, we're giving them permission to let go and just relax and be at peace and calmness. We're not going subconscious, but we're just telling the brain, okay, you don't have anything to do right now, just relax. And we'll do a little bit of Hong Sa practice first. So let's inhale and tense the body. 
through the breath out and relax. Again, inhale, tense, relax. The whole purpose of this exercise before Hoksa is really to relax the body. And by tensing, we kind of create tension in, in a conscious way and then relax it in a conscious way. So tense one more time and then consciously relax the entire body. And from this point of deep relaxation, stillness, let's just begin practicing Hong Sa. First, watch the physical breath or feel it in the nostrils, especially gazing upwards. Do the mantra with the breath. But feel that we're communing with God as peace. And even though eyes are gazing upwards, have some awareness of that stillness at the center of the heart. If you know the Hong Sa in the spine practice, you can do it a way that Swamiji taught, which is to feel the energy rising just from below the heart to just above the heart in the Sushumna, and then descending from just above the heart to just below the heart with the exhalation. Rising with inhalation, descending with exhalation, Hong and Sa. We're not controlling, we're just feeling and enjoying that heart energy. Let's do this for a few minutes. Devarshi, you are muted. Thank you. So go to that point of complete stillness in the heart now, letting go of Hong Sa. And enjoy that stillness, that point of intuitive perception, feeling, awareness. Eyes still gazing upwards, but the awareness on that point in the heart. And rest there for a minute or two. And now be aware that that feeling is God. It is an aspect of God. Comforting. Expanding.
ओम शांति 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 Now I would suggest trying to practice some of this at every meditation. I have been doing that this for about the last year quite a lot and really it's extremely helpful during times of anxiety and stress worry which I think we all face at different times. And that's the answer. The answer isn't figuring it out and figuring out our problems in the head. It's really just going to that point of stillness in the heart and then we can deal from that center with life's problems and all the challenges we face. So now Jamal Ji will share. Thank you, dear Suji. Uh, hello and welcome everyone. I was going to talk about peace and I still will a little bit, but I want at the moment to think about stillness, um, that peace comes with stillness. There is a quote from the Christian Bible, be still and know that I am God. And that if we can find this stillness within ourselves, that we will know peace and we will know that aspect of God. And it is always with us, but we are constantly running out and around and about, which is fine also. Um, it's a part of being human. And all of this that you've been given by Master, all of these techniques, all of these teachings, they're not going to turn you into less of a human that they're going to turn you into a true human being who can feel, who can experience, who can do all of life uh, in a very wonderful and great manner uh, from this point of stillness within. That so often on the beginning of the spiritual path, I thought that I had to leave so many things so that I could be a good spiritual person in God's eyes. Um, but actually, if we practice Hong Sa deeply and well every day, that it allows us to do all of our different duties even better in this world, because we can do them from a state of calmness, from a state of peace within. And we all know intuitively, intellectually, we've all studied we know this space is somewhere within us, but sometimes if you've been on the path for a long time, we sit and we're sitting there, but we're just thinking about our little problems or whatever, and we've forgotten to take Hong Sa seriously. And if we can even take it seriously for 15 minutes of really sitting there very, very still, it's that we begin to remember how much we enjoy this peace and calmness and that it is who we truly are. That in a way, it's not even something that we have to achieve. That I've also approached meditation and the spiritual path with so much willpower that I will just make this happen no matter what it takes. Just tell me the formula and I'll sit down and I'll make it happen. And that attitude doesn't, it takes you a certain distance and it's fine to use some willpower. And in Song Hong Sa, we have to use some willpower, otherwise we fall asleep. But that willpower has to be almost like a child just uh, holding his father's hand and just determining not to let go, but knowing really that dad is doing it all and leading us where we need to go and taking care of us. And so if we just hold on to that and relax into it and remember that this state of peace, that it is who we truly are, and then we really can sail through life um, unshaken amidst the crash of breaking worlds. And as we grow spiritually, God, Master, will give us even crazier challenges maybe than the world is right now. But it's all right. 
that we know it's his dream and that it's not actually ours. Another part of life is just realizing that this is not my responsibility, that the world is not my responsibility, problems in our family are not my responsibility. It seems like it is, but it's not. And even many of these problems, the best way to solve them is to be a peaceful person. And another point I want to make, I recognize many of the names here and I'm happy to see you all. And many of you are Kriyabans. And when we become Kriyabans, I mean, I'll talk for myself at least, I thought, all right, I'll do all this stuff just so I can get Kriya finally. And then now I can really start moving those planets around and making my one year of spiritual growth with my 30 seconds of Kriya. And uh, doing Kriya, of course, is important. But don't forget Hong Sa. That it, it, it also is really just as important to be able to have the technique where we can sit very still. I'm almost out of time. But I wanted, so don't forget Hong Sa. It's, it's so important. And use it. You have to practice. Um, anyway, uh, I wanted to read just one thing of Swamiji. And so listen, listen deeply, because sometimes we read Swamiji's words and we go, oh, how sweet. But Swamiji, he's telling us things from his own experience. And so listen to this. Hong like the tolling of a bell, rings outward as though dissolving the sound into the surrounding atmosphere. This rever reveration, reverberation, there we go, this reverberation merges into spirit with the next sound, saw. The sound saw emphasizes the consciousness of peace. Hong vibrates with the incoming breath, saw with the outgoing. The two sounds together bring our breathing gradually into a state of peace and equilibrium. So as we pronounce the word mentally, obviously, but Hong, that it's, it's going, a vibration is going outward and it's dissolving sound into all of space. And then that vibration that's going out with that mental sound, Hong, um, it merges into all spirit. And then this next sound, saw that it emphasizes peace and it takes us back deep into that space of peace that is always within us. I have so much to share and always so little time I want to tell you a fun story, but we have to wait for some other time. Because the last thing we're going to do now, we're going to listen to something called metaphysical meditations. And the only way I can think for you to listen to this again is to listen to this recording again. But again, these are master's words and Swamiji reading them. Anytime you need peace, just play this three minute recording and this will help you so, so much. So let's listen to peace now for the next three minutes. Peace flows through my heart and blows through me as a zephyr. Peace fills me like a fragrance. Peace runs through me like rays. Stabs the heart of noise and worries. Peace burns through my disquietude.
peace like a globe of fire expands and fills my omnipresence. Peace like an ocean rolls on in all space. Peace like red blood vitalizes the veins of my thoughts. Peace like a boundless aureole encircles my body of infinity. Peace flames pour through the pores of my flesh and through all space. The perfume of peace flows over the gardens of blossoms. The wine of peace runs perpetually through the wine press of all hearts. Peace is the breath of stones, stars, and sages. Peace is the ambrosial wine of spirit flowing from the cask of silence, which I quaff with my countless mouths of atoms. So just to wrap up here, um, I, I just want to say that practice is the key. So we've urged you at the beginning to take some amount of time that you would decide to do Hong Sa. So whatever that is, please keep practicing for the next week that that is the key.